Welcome to another Animal of the Week. Today we are finally moving away from the many dual-named animals of the past few months and on to an equally strangely named animal, the paradoxical frog. This frog is a frog belonging to the family Hylidae, but the real question is, why is it called the paradoxical frog? The paradox comes from the way it develops as a tadpole. Most frogs start as tiny little tadpoles and grow into larger frogs. However, the paradoxical frog is quite the opposite, and there lies the paradox. The frog starts as a massive tadpole around 10 inches in size and grows down into a frog only a quarter of the size. Truly a paradoxical frog. Paradoxical frogs are only found naturally in South America, amongst the rivers and marshes and lagoons of Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Venezuela, Colombia, Suriname, Paraguay, Peru, French Guiana, Guyana, and even the island of Trinidad and Tobago. The frog will spend most of their lives in the water, and are most active at night. They are most common in bodies of water that are covered in floating plants and vegetation. They are largely found in the Pantanal in Brazil, probably because it is the world's largest tropical wetland, so it provides excellent habitat for the frogs. Like most frogs, their diet consists of mainly insects and other amphibians, mostly other frogs. It has a defence mechanism in which it uses its strong rear legs to dig up mud from the bottom of the pond or lagoon, creating a cloud of mud to cover its escape. It also uses this mechanism to find food, digging up small amphibians or spooking others into darting out of their hiding places straight into the frog's path. Other than its strange tadpole form, it's really just a normal frog, and so it hunts, eats and breeds like most others. The breeding process is really nothing very special. Just like other frogs, the male climbs onto the female's back and mates, and the female lays her spawn on the side of the lagoon amongst vegetation to protect them. The mating season is very much based upon the rain, with the frogs breeding when it's wet to ensure there is enough water for the spawn to be laid in, and for the tadpoles to survive in. The spawn is greenish froth, unlike the common frogs who have clear spawn with tiny black tadpoles within. So now comes the very interesting part. The tadpoles when they first hatch obviously aren't four times the size of the adults, but they will get to that point. They start off as small tadpoles that can actually fit in the spawn that is laid by the females, but then grow exponentially, up to around 10 inches in length. The location in which they are spawned has a huge effect on this process. Those spawned in temporary ponds from heavy rainfall don't ever get to these massive sizes and will develop into their adult forms as quickly as possible. Those spawned in permanent lagoons have the time, space and resources to grow into the ridiculous sizes they can reach. Once matured, the 10 inch tadpoles then shrink again down into their adult forms that are only one quarter the size they were, and that is the paradoxical frog. It isn't fully known why they grow to these sizes, when other tadpoles don't, but we can make reasonable guesses. Survival may be a key reason, as tadpoles in small temporary ponds don't grow to 10 inches and act like most other tadpoles, but tadpoles in large lagoons grow to large sizes, it can be theorised that perhaps they need to grow to these large sizes in order to survive against the many more threats in a large lagoon when compared to a small pond. That's just an idea though and may not be the real reason. An interesting adaptation they possess is the presence of a peptide called Sudan 2. This is used by the frogs to help stop infections on their skin, however it may also be useful to humans. A joint effort from scientists from the University of Ulster and the University of the UAE in 2008 found that when a pancreas was exposed to the peptide, it secreted insulin, and so it is thought it may be useful in treating type 2 diabetes, the type that is mainly caused by obesity, but also sometimes there is a genetic factor. The IUCN lists the paradoxical frogs as least concern, which is good, as I would hate for these unique creatures to go extinct. But you never know, with the Amazon rainforest still being cut down at alarming rates, the area may dry up into an arid savanna if the tipping point at which the rainforest can no longer support itself through transpiration occurs. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.